days I wake up and I pinch myself You're with me, not someone When you love someone You open up your heart When you love someone You make room If you G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And by request today, I'll be teaching you how to play Love Someone by Lucas Graham. Now for the basics of this song, you'll need your guitar in standard tuning and you won't need a capo. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Now in this video, I'm going to teach you two different ways of playing this song. I'll start with the easy strummed version for the beginners out there, and then I'll teach you how to play the finger-picked version later in the video. The guitar that I'm using today is a Cole Clark Angel 2 made out of Blackwood. Cole Clark's my favorite acoustic guitar brand, so be sure to check them out. So let's jump into the easy strum version, and we'll start with a verse, which has a nice and easy four chord chord progression which is just a C chord then an E minor then A minor and finally an F now for the strumming pattern we're gonna have something that sounds like this down up mute down 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 up now that mute or that slap is more or less a down strum but at the same time you come down with that strum your palm will hit the strings so that you just get that muted percussive sound. And if I'm playing with a C chord, it'll sound like this. Down, up, slap, down, 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 down. Up. But if you can't manage to do that muted slap, then you can just play a down strum instead, which will sound like this. Down, up, down, 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 down. Up. Now you're gonna use that strumming pattern once for each chord and the verse will just sound like this. Next we move on to the pre-chorus and there's two lines of chords here. We start with an F chord and then we go to G and A minor. Now you'll notice that the G and the A minor are within one set of brackets and that just means that those two chords are within one strumming pattern. And the point at which you'll change chords is highlighted here in the annotation. So the G to the A minor sounds like this. Down, up, slap. Down, 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 down. And together for the first line, So that's it for the first line of chords and you'll play that through three times. Now for our second line of chords we have an E minor, then an F, and then a G at 11. So you'll have your ring and middle finger on the third and second frets of the sixth and fifth string, and your index finger goes on the first fret of the second string. You don't want to hit the first string though, so it's just up to the second string. Now for this line of chords there is no strumming pattern, you'll just be strumming each chord once but there is particular timing here. So the E minor is on the one beat, the F is on the end beat after the two, and the G at 11 is on the four beat. So it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Next we get to the chorus and there's three lines of chords here. We start with an F, G, that's within one strumming pattern, and then C to A minor within another strumming pattern. And the second line of chords is almost identical, except we don't have the C to A minor, we just have the A minor by itself for one full strumming pattern. So all together for those first two lines will sound like this. Now we'll be playing through those two lines of chords through twice and then we just get to our third line of chords which is just F, G and then A minor and F which sounds like this. Next we get to our bridge and there's two lines of chords here. Now we're just going to use that same strumming pattern that we've had for the rest of the song as well. Now I just want to note though that the last two chords, the A minor and the D minor, are just 
strummed once and held out. There's no strumming pattern there. So the bridge in total will sound like this. And our final chorus is almost identical to the other choruses, except for the final line of chords, we go F, G, and then A minor, and play that A minor for a full strumming pattern, instead of going to the A minor and F. And to end the song, we just have three chords. We have F, G, and then C to end the song. So now let's get into the finger-picked version, which is what is in the studio recording. So we're going to start with the C bar chord like this. So in next finger bars, the third fret from the fifth string onwards and your middle ring and pinky finger will go on the fifth frets of the fourth, third and second strings. Now for our finger picking basics, your thumb will take care of the sixth, fifth and fourth strings and your index middle and ring finger will take care of the third, second and first strings respectively. And they shouldn't pluck any other strings other than the ones that have been assigned to. So for this first bar, we're going to be plucking the bass note first and then we'll pluck the third and second strings quickly one after the other and then we're going to do a slap. So you just need to drop your picking can like that onto the strings and most of that sound comes from the side of your thumb hitting those bass notes. So you drop that on the two beat and then on the end beat after the two, we're going to pinch the fifth and first strings together like that. Now on the end beat after the three, we'll then hit the second string by itself and then we'll slap again on the four beat. So that's our typical pattern and it will sound like this for the C. For our next chord shape, we're going up to an E minor bar chord like this. So index finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string, ring and picky on the ninth fret of the fourth and third strings and your middle finger on the eighth fret of the second string. Now in terms of timing, all the notes are played exactly the same as what we had in the first bar. But we'll start with the bass note and then we'll go fourth string, third string, and then slap, and then pinch the fifth and second strings together, and then pluck the third string on the end beat after the three and finish with a slap on the four beat. So for this bar, it will sound like this. For our third bar, we're gonna go down to an A minor chord shape and we're gonna have the same timing. Now, the notes that we're gonna hit are the bass note first and then the third and second string, slap on the two beat and then we'll pinch the fifth and first strings together on the end beat after the two and then we'll pluck the second string by itself on the end beat after the three and slap again on the four. One. And finally we go to the F bar chord, we're plucking the sixth string, then the fourth and third, slapping on the two beat, pinching the sixth and first strings together, and then plucking the second string by itself and slapping on the four beat. One, two, and three, and four. So that's it for the verse riff and it'll sound like this all together. Next we get to the pre-chorus and we start with that F chord shape and it's the exact same thing that we had in the last bar of the verse. Like that. Now for the second bar we're going to do a lazy G chord shape so your ring and middle finger just go on the third and second frets of the sixth and fifth strings. We're going to pluck the sixth string and then the third and second strings and then slap on the two beat and then quickly go to an A minor chord shape and we're gonna pinch the fifth and second strings together and then hit the third string by itself and then slap. Like that. So that's it for the first line of tab and we're gonna play that through three times. And then the second line of tab is just an E minor and we're pinching the sixth and third strings together, slapping on the two, then going to an F chord, pinching the same strings on the end beat after the two. And then on the four beat, we're playing a G add 11 and we're pinching the sixth and second strings together. So all together, the pre-chorus will sound like this.
Next we get to the chorus and we're going to start with our F chord shape. We'll start by plucking the 6th string, then the 4th and 3rd string, slap on the 2 beat, and then we'll go to our lazy G chord and pinch the 6th and 2nd strings together. Hold that out and then we slap on the 4 beat there. So that first bar, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... For our next bar we'll do the C chord, 5th string bass note, then the 2nd and 1st strings, slap, and then we go to an A minor chord shape and pinch the 5th and 2nd strings together and then slap on the 4 beat. Now the 2nd line of tab is almost identical except for the 2nd bar. For the 2nd bar we go straight to an A minor chord shape, we pluck the 5th string, 3rd and 2nd, slap and then pinch the 5th and 2nd strings together and then slap on the 4 beat. So the 2nd line of tab for this chorus Now those first two lines of tabs are played through twice and then we get to our third line of tab. Our third line of tab is identical to the second line of tab except for the last bar we go from the A minor to the F chord like this. One and two and three and four. So in total the chorus will sound like this. Next we get to part one of the bridge and we'll start with a D minor shape like this. We'll pluck fourth string, then second and first slap on the two beat and then pinch the fourth and first strings together on the end beat after the two. Hold that out and slap on the four. We then go to our lazy G chord shape. Timing is going to be exactly the same but our strings are a little different. So just look at the tabs to see what notes I'm plucking. So the G will sound like this. And then we go to a C chord. Again, timing's exactly the same. Just make sure you're plucking the right strings, which is up in here in the tab. And our final bar is an A minor, and the same thing applies. So that's it for the first part of the bridge, which sounds like this. Now for the second part of the bridge, the first line of tab is exactly the same, but for our second line of tab, we just have an A minor strummed for one bar, and then a D minor strummed for one bar. Now moving on, we get to our quiet chorus, and in the quiet chorus, we're playing something a little bit different. So we'll just need to play an F chord shape like this. So we'll pluck fourth, third, then second string, then slap, and then we'll go up to a G shape, so just the same shape there, up two frets, and we're pinching the fourth and second strings together, and then slapping on the four beat, so it'll sound like this. One and two and three and four. And then we'll go to a C bar chord, like we'll hit the fifth string, and then we hit the first string, slap, and then we go to an A minor chord shape like this. So just bar your index finger across the fifth frets of the second and third strings, and ring finger comes onto the seventh fret of the fourth string and we pinch the fourth and second strings together, like that. So in total for the first line of this quiet chorus, when we move on to the second line of tab, the first bar is exactly the same. When we get to our second bar though, we just stay on this A minor chord shape and pluck the fourth string, third, second, slap, and then pinch the fourth and second together, and then slap on the four beat. So the quiet chorus all together. And then we go back into our regular chorus to end the song. 
So there you have it guys, two ways of playing Love Someone by Lucas Graham. Now I'll be doing two playthroughs of this song. The first one is the Easy Strum version. The second one is the Studio Finger Picked version. And I'll have a vocal track on top for some context as well. So feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go. I make 
Thanks guys, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to head over to guitarzeritohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you're stuck in a rut and you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zerity Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. As always, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Leave your thoughts, comments, questions, or requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zerity Hero. Cheers.